Welcome to season four of the Lead with Coffee podcast, where we continue the journey into how you can change the culture in your business and your home through simple leadership practices. Grab a cup of coffee and get ready to join into today's conversation. We made it to season four. Welcome to 2022, David. Are you so excited? I am excited for 2022, and I'm excited that this is our first podcast of the year. I know. We are looking forward to season four. We've got a lot of fun topics for season four. And while the year is starting a little like 2021, we're going to keep moving forward, right? Because 2021, if you listen to the end of season three, actually turned out to be a really transformative year for us. And so we're excited to take that transformation and move it into 2022. It's January, and most likely that means you have started a new diet, joined the gym, made some resolutions to better yourself from last year, maybe all of the above. Yeah, usually all of the above. (laughs) But odds are you most likely have stopped the new diet, (laughs) quit the gym because you're 30 days into January at this point, and you're feeling like you failed already, and that some version of success that was played out in social media for you uh, made you feel like if you didn't lose 12 pounds in 10 days that you failed. And the reality is, is that it's going to be impossible to ever feel success in a new year if your markers are someone else's version of who you should be. And so we want to breach today's conversation as new year, same you. Because a lot of what you're hearing and the mass marketing of personal coaches and health experts and whoever it is that's speaking into your life or overtaking your social media, whether you asked for it or not. Yeah, they're listening. Are telling you it has to be new year, new you. Yeah. And that can be defeating because we don't always know what new you is supposed to be. New you needs to be 50 pounds lighter and perfect diet and traveling the world, working from your laptop, right? That's what the dream is being presented to all of us. But the reality is, it's not new you. It's new year, same you, just elevated. And that's where we want to take it today. So our challenge this year is to not try to become somebody new, but to elevate the person that you were last year. And maybe that's coming into a healthier version of you, a happier version, or maybe even just a more mindful version of how you're coping, how you're dealing with life and ways to make it more successful than it was last year. So these are the goals that there's no measurement set by anyone other than you Mm -hmm. because you're elevating you. So there's no failing. It is just, am I doing better than I did yesterday? Like David says, am I doing better than I did last year? And is my goal to spend more time slowing down, sitting in nature, being mindful and feeling the things that I'm feeling versus moving through my objectives so quickly? Yeah. And going back, I I mean, we've heard it all of our lives and who even knows where it came from. Maybe should have done some research on that word. New Year's resolutions came from Mm -hmm. because they were always these lofty goals and, you know, we're going to get through Thanksgiving and Christmas and binge and, you know, go crazy. But January 1st, we're going to be a whole new person. We can, you know, day one, cold turkey, we're going to start fresh. We're going to start fresh. (laughs) We're not only are we going to eat better, we're going to sleep more. We're going to be, you know, better husbands and fathers and um, leaders and all these things. And for some reason, we have it in our heads that we're all going to accomplish that on the same day. Mm-hmm. And or the how, same 30 days. The same January 30 days. January is your marker, right? Yeah. Pass or fail. Right, right. <laughs> and and so we, we feel that, oh, it's a fresh start. It is a fresh start. Every day is a fresh start, by the way. Uh, but we pile it all up instead of trying to do it throughout the year in small increments that are actually achievable. So we, we the whole point of new year, same you, but elevated is, look, I am me, you are you, and we are going to make small achievable goals for ourselves, but we're not going to 
go into this year saying that we are going to be completely transformed in the next 30 days. Mm -hmm. We're going to maybe accomplish a few things in January, add a couple more in February, and just keep building small, achievable, attainable goals that are to make ourselves better than who we were before and not try to make ourselves better than what we see on social media or on the news or your friends or your parents or siblings, whoever, if it's not you quit comparing yourself to it. And that's all of us. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about that and kind of talk about what, what are the things that we can do? What are reasonable expectations and how do we do it? Yeah. And we're not saying don't get healthier. Mm -hmm. What we're saying is don't let social media tell you what healthy is for you. And we all fall in this trap. I mean, after the holidays, everyone wants to feel lighter. And whether that's emotionally or physically or both, a lot of us are coming off of what can be a stressful time of gathering and whatever's going on in your organization, whatever's going on with your family. I mean, the holidays can be stressful. I think everyone kind of does this detox in January. And whether that's food, whether that's just from people, (laughs) whatever, the news, you know, we all need to kind of like have this month where we just set our intentions. But what we want to do is make sure that you're not feeling right out of the gate, like you failed yourself. Yep. What you failed is someone's version of who they say you can be. But the reality is, is their journey is not your journey. And and David has done, you know, a huge journey with health in his past and and can talk into that a little bit. And, and last year, you know, as your birthday comes around, you're always like, oh, I need, I need something. I need to lose my 20 pounds of COVID. And and, and I got suckered into trying the lose 12 pounds in 12 days diet plan. And you know what I found out about that is my body was not made for that particular plan. Yeah. It's protein, high protein, and, you know, lots of different pills, no exercise. <laughs> Sounds great, right? And the reality is, is I don't process protein. So you're putting six ounces of protein in a body that doesn't process protein um, six times a day. Yeah. So I was so sick. And David's watching me go from someone who was, you know, slowly getting onto a healthy routine of working out and, and all those things to be told, don't work out, Mm -hmm. just eat a lot of protein, follow our supplements, and you're going to be great. Well, I I wasn't great. I was sick, more sick than I had been. And on these calls with a health coach that's like trying to figure out why you're not meeting their metrics. Well, my body was not meant to meet those metrics for that plan. And so now I find that if I just drink some juices for breakfast and lunch and have a meal, I feel so much better. And my body's reacting positively. And am I losing 12 pounds in 12 days? No, but should that be my goal? Because that's someone else's goal for their, you know, online business that they're doing. So I think, you know, we there's this hype in January, like health, 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 health. So we want to expand that to mental health, emotional health, and physical health. And I think that on the physical health portion, by the way, if anybody tells you you can lose 12 pounds in 12 days, there is some some factual knowledge about that that I have. But most likely if you were a heavy chip eater and soda drinker and coffee drinker and all those things and you stop that and your body stopped holding all that water, yeah, you, you could lose some water weight that quick, but uh, it, your body doesn't work that way. Most bodies don't work that way, and, and they do work for some, but I'm just saying no hard work, no real results, bottom line. Oh, you, that's good. Yeah, you you, you got to put the time in <laughs> to be able to get the results. But what about us quick fix people? Your body is not a quick fix thing. It, it wasn't, it, you didn't quickly get to the point where you're at, yeah. you're not going to quickly get out of it. And it's just like anything else, mental health, it wasn't most likely it just wasn't one thing to mess up your mental health. It was a long time. So fixing your mental health isn't going to be fixed overnight either. Mm -hmm. There are some things that we can do 
uh, to make better decisions and we can put ourselves in positions to make better decisions and be around people that will help us through those. But there is no quick fix. Yeah. And that's why, you know, what. This is so I'm going on two years now where I'm not going to the gym every day. We built a gym in our garage from COVID, you know, when COVID started, and I'm mostly content now. It's just too far away to go every morning. But for 20 years, January for the person that goes to the gym most of the time was horrible because everything was taken. And then by the 10th of January, <laughs> it cleared up a little bit, and by the 15th, it was back to where it was. And just think of Think of all the aspects of that. Think of the gym owners that are like, yeah, I got all these people to join for a year. This just paid all my bills for the year and they're going to be gone. So less maintenance, you know, coming in two to three weeks. Great. And then there's the people that joined the gym and just wasted $400 because they're not going to go back. They, you know, and it's just not setting up your mind clear enough to be prepared and why wait till January, but that January one, I'm going to get a gym membership and I'm going you know, six days a week. And by day three, if you've gone the first two days, you are so sore, you don't want to go. And that's a demotivating thing. So again, that that's on the health side of things. Um, but you have to set yourself small, achievable goals and not try to tackle the entire year, the first day of the year. Yeah. Well, we're all guilty of it. Absolutely. I mean, man, I watched my 400 bucks come and go and my 12 pounds stayed. <laughs> <laughs> How did that work out for me? <laughs> and then I had to go do some other measures to get rid of all the protein that wasn't, wasn't, wasn't moving through my body. <laughs> but, you know, this is reality is that we all want the quick fix and we all see someone that is, is selling us something that, that, they know we all want, right? No. And and good for them if they, if it has changed their lives. I'm not saying that these programs don't work. What I'm saying to you is that set yourself up for success in 2022 by really slowing down your mind, slowing down your body, and figuring out what you really need. And you know whether you can process certain things certain ways. I knew that I could not process that way, but yet I still was like, yes, I need to lose 12 pounds before we go on vacation. Didn't work. But anyway, the, the, we want you to stop aiming for transformation and aim for elevation. Yeah. And, and see if you find, like David said, those small victories that are going to build momentum for you, as, and that will keep setting towards the larger goals. As you see all right, if I just make this one shift this week, I start to feel better. And so what if I keep that and I add one more thing in? Maybe how am I going to feel better still, right? And then I add something in that makes me feel horrible. It's like that does not work for my body. Great. And then how do I add time in for pausing? How do I t add time in for a walk outside? Like what does that do for my soul if I don't do the treadmill and I go for a walk around the neighborhood? How much different do I feel? You know, and so I think that there's all these things that happen to us where we get trapped and feeling like someone else's measurement of my success makes me feel like a failure. And that's what happened to me. I really felt really defeated. I felt like I failed myself. This plan works for everyone else because it's all over my social media of how everyone else is losing weight. By the way, they're only posting those that it worked for. They're I not know. posting the ones they that it didn't work for. Mine. <laughs> But you, it makes you feel like you have failed yourself. And then you're really demotivated because then you're like, well, whatever. I guess this is just what I'm meant to look like. By the way, failure is an option. I know. But, you know, come on, ladies. Join me in this one. Like, we would all like to see some change and quickly. So cool sculpting. Is yeah. that going to fail me? I don't know. Uh, might be next. Right, right. <laughs> and, and that's the thing that we've been talking about. It's like failure is an option. You are going to fail. And failure is okay. Yeah. You learn from failure. And just like a diet plan, two or three you, you try might not work. And the fourth or fifth one might be the thing that works for you and your body. But you don't know until you try. It's the same thing with, you know, getting a degree. A lot of kids are, you know, going to college thinking that they want one thing. And they decide once they start studying it that they hate it. Mm-hmm. 
and they change their degree maybe even a couple times until they find the one that they have the true passion for and then it just accelerates and it's going to be true with everything else in life there are some parts of the business and my job that I don't like and there's other things that I have a passion for and I accelerate at and everything in life those are the things that we need to be putting more of our time into the things that we're really really good at and spend less time worrying about the things that don't come natural to us and that we do not enjoy doing right and I do believe that health is the foundation for how you are as a leader and that you have to set yourself up for success personally to be strong professionally and so whether it's emotional or physical health and so this balance if you step into 2022 with maybe a goal every quarter to pick something that's going to help support you and your growth so maybe q1 is is your physical health maybe you're going to just start to eat a little lighter, eat a little better, go for walks outside. You, and you don't have to join the gym. You don't have to do the crazy plans. You don't have the 21 day fix that's going to be, you know, killing you and making you grumpy at work. You know, it's all this thing, right? Like what if it's a 21 week fix instead of a 21 day fix and you settle into like every day I'm going to elevate and be a little bit more um, intentional about it. So what if you break it into seasons where, you know, the first season of the year is, is health and we're, we're, you know, we're, we're laying off the, all the sweets and desserts we had at the holidays and now we're just eating a little lighter. And then what if the second season in quarter two is really working on your professional, you know, maybe pick one thing that's interesting to you and dive into that a little bit that quarter. Listen to some podcasts do a webinar, do something, take a, a extension course at a university, pick one thing. Attend an off, awesome conference like we are. Or attend an awesome conference. So tell them, where are we going? Uh, we are going to F Orlando, Florida in May for the Entree Leadership Summit. Dave Ramsey and his crew with just awesome, awesome speakers. We watched it online last year. It motivated our entire team. Sarah and I are going this year to experience it in person, and we are just so excited because we feel that coming out of that, we're going to make some awesome new friends. We're going to be motivated by these speakers, and I just think that this is going to be a turning point for how the rest of the year plays out for us. Yeah. With, with being, and, and what I can say about going to conferences like this and your professional development, when you are around more people that are like-minded, you're going to excel a lot faster. And I heard this ET and his crew, you know, I love my ET and secret to success podcast guys are awesome. What they were talking about was when you are in high school or going into college and you, you have your crew, you have your, your buddies, your, your people that you've been hanging around and you start accelerating a little bit more. Just think about like you're, you're running a marathon and you know, the first couple miles, everyone's side by side, you're doing good. But by my mile five, you're still at your pace, your comfortable pace, you're feeling good. But your people are a little bit far behind, because they didn't train as hard. They didn't have the same mindset as you had to be able to complete this whole thing. And by the time you're at mile 10, you're, you're slow down a little bit, but you still got a decent pace and your friends are nowhere to be found. But you look side to side. And there's other people that are next to you that are running at the same pace you are. And those are the people you start connecting with and say, hey, you know, let's let's pump each other up. Let's get each, each other going for the next few miles. And by the time you're at the end of the race, you might, might, might have made some new friends. And so it's the same thing with business that if you are on a pace and the people you're hanging with aren't on that pace, you're not going to move forward. They're going to be holding you back. But if you are looking at the people that are next to you, kind of have the same dreams, aspirations, big picture vision – or people that are in front of you that you want to catch up with, that's where your focus should be. Those are the people that you should be spending your time with. And that hit me this morning. I was like, yeah, that is so true. You know, no hating on the people you started with, but on the professional level or the relationship level or whatever level, there are some other people that are more like-minded to where you want to go. And those are who you want to spend your time with. Yeah, it's so true. And, and so in Q2, we do 
have this blocked time for our professional growth for David and I and we're unique in that we're both dreamers and we both have this passion to grow and evolve and elevate and you don't always have that in your marriage let alone in your workplace with um, a peer and so it can sometimes feel really isolating if yeah. you're trying to grow but everyone around you is like yeah but you need to go be a good wife and a good mother and go do all these things so how can you balance that in your dreams with the expectation of all these things and it's like you can do it all you have to be intentional about it and for us we've talked about it a lot we have to leave we have to leave here we have to leave our house we have to you know ideally leave town we couldn't do that last year um, but we were lucky to get to go to the oaks um, not too far from our our house and, and dream and plan but to go away and give ourselves intentional time focused five days and it's an investment it's a large investment to go to this which means you need to be all in you can't be half in half out doing your work going to the conference for a couple of hours go back and do your work like no if you're gonna go you need to be all in and i think that part of being a leader and realizing i don't need to be a new kind of leader I need to be a a better leader than I was last year. I need to be a better dreamer. I don't need to be a new dreamer. So this whole new year, new year, new you, throw it away. We need to just go, okay, we did well last year. So how do we do better this year? Like, what are we, what are we striving for? What are we aiming for? And we can't dream here. You can't dream while you're in it, while you're doing it. You got to step away from it. And that's not on vacation with your family. It's intentional time to say, what's my professional career doing? Where do I want it to go? What's my plan to get there for the next three to five years, not three to five months? Right. And just think, trying to get my words correctly. Um, who you are today matters and you are so important where you are in your life that being a better you should be the only goal being average and accepting average is not going to give you the fulfillment in life that you want so Accept who you are, where you are right now, no matter where that is. Be proud of who you are. Be proud of the things that you've already, that you've already been through, that you've already dealt with. And know that you have the control to be better from here. Mm-hmm. You know that 12 months are going to pass. I've said this several times. 12 months are going to pass. It's going to be January 2023. Am I going to look back in a year and say, wow, I'd been doing the same thing for 12 months, or am I going to say I challenged myself, I strove for this, that failed miserably, (laughs) that plan didn't work out, but overall, I'm a better person, I'm a smarter person, I'm a a more developed person, um, but I'm proud of what I've done and where where I've been this last year, and that's all the mindsets we should have. Not everyone feels that way, and that's fine, but I feel... Those months are going to pass, and it's really on yourself to decide where you're going to take it. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to just be okay with how it's always been and that's the way it's always going to be? Or are you going to challenge yourself to get out of that rut and be something that maybe you can't even dream at this point that you can become? Mm -hmm. It's there. I promise you it is there. You just have to believe in yourself to, to go after it. Yeah. So... Ladies, if you're like me, buy the bigger pair of jeans, but get a really cute pair of shoes that make you feel good and just be okay with it, right? (laughs) And know that if you feel like a failure after month one of 2022, it's not you. It's who society is telling you who you should be. But like David said, you just need to be the best version of you. And it's small little steps that give you momentum to the next thing. And you're going to find that moment when it all clicks and makes sense. But don't feel like you failed because it's January and you haven't set your goals and you're not perfect size or whatever. And that goes for the men too. Like, be all right with it. Like, 
don't go indulge in the cupcakes, but like just be all right that this, I, it took me a while to get here. It's going to take me a while to get back out. And maybe I need to work more on my mental health and mindfulness first. Because when I take the stress down, guess what happens to the body weight? That body weight's also going to go down. So we just want you to have a different focus and turn off your social media and bypass all those awesome personal coaches that actually took 10 years to look like they look. And they're doing great things for a lot of people, but slow it down. Let your marker be you and not someone else. We appreciate that you decided to hang out and spend some time with us discussing life and leadership. It would mean the world to us if you would share this episode on social media to increase our online presence. If you enjoyed the episode, please take a minute to rate it and review it wherever you listen. Mahalo! Mahalo!